Do you ever find it hard to stay aware of your surroundings when you reach those high pressure in game scenarios? You know, with tarps and builds being placed all around you and just hearing all the lobby's footsteps surrounding you, it's a lot for any player to really process at once. But you're going to show me where you watch your motivation, guys. That's why I am back. We're going to be going through five different awareness tips. They're going to help you become more aware in your arena matches from start to finish, helping you get closer to winning some more games and just rack up those victory royales. Let me ask you this, man. You guys ready for this? Let's get this going. All right, so before we get into training ourselves in end game to be really more aware, you first need to make sure that you already have the right settings and a good enough pair of headphones. You know, headphones, guys, are just super important because they give you a whole dimension of information that you just can't acquire with just your vision alone. Audio and Fortnite can provide you with so much information that can help you win your fights. For example, let me break it down. Like listening out for footsteps can really help you survive players who are hiding around corners and more. And so as this is just, you know, a game that really relies heavily on audio as well as visual, you're going to need a good headset, I'm telling you. Of course, you know, when choosing the right headset, you don't need anything too fancy. Just make sure that you aren't using a headset that only has one ear cup. And that audio quality is good. You know, any brand is going to do. Just make sure that you can do your own research and just choose what's right for you. Okay, so now once you've found a headset that you're definitely comfortable with, you don't want to really mess it all up and not use the right audio settings, all right? So when you're playing Fortnite, make sure that your audio volume settings are balanced. I'm telling you, it's so important. Sometimes when the game audio is too loud for some people, it just really makes the sounds harder to process. It can actually throw you off. Also, if you're playing in a trio, make sure that the voices from your teammates aren't too loud and just overpowering the game audio itself. Also, make sure that you turn on the 3D headphones option as well as high sound quality. The 3D headphones allow you to more precisely locate the enemy's footsteps above you, below, and around you. Okay, so if you don't use a headset right now for whatever reason, you might want to enable visualized sound effects, and this is going to help with your in-game awareness. This option makes it so that, you know, spatial sound is off. However, you do get visual markers that tell you where sound is being made as a replacement. And so after you follow these steps, guys, you should see that, you know, you're just much more able to pinpoint enemy players all throughout your games, making it easier to fight and win. All right, so if you guys are looking to take your skills, I'm talking about like to the next level. I mean, top tier competitors. Do you want your friends to shiver at the thought of you? Like seriously? Well, that's all possible at ProGuys.com. So sign up with our 20% discount code RankUp2021 and receive insane one-on-one -on -one coaching that's gonna make you a Fortnite beast. Visit ProGuys.com and get started today. One of the hardest challenges to overcome when working on your awareness is tunnel visioning in your games. You know, when we say tunnel visioning, we usually mean going for eliminations that put you in a bad position for the rest of the game. And the skill is, you know, knowing when and when not to go for kills. So imagine a scenario where it's early game and you haven't got a lot of materials, no shield, you know, 50 HP, and you're stuck box fighting an enemy. So what you need to do to really start doing in these situations is disengaging, all right, getting better loot, and not fighting until you're safe. Especially during those late game scenarios, you simply just can't chase kills without risking getting shot by another team, which is why it's important to let those eliminations go. Just forget about them and just focus on the main goal of placing number one. You know, the only reason why you should, you know, ever chase a kill and put yourself at risk is if you simply need those materials to help you survive for longer. All right. And so when you watch the pros, you're going to see them hit someone for white with an AR. But since they're so far away, there's not even any point wasting your ammunition on them since you really aren't going to gain anything from it. So now that harpoons are out of the game, I mean, most of the time you can't even get any loot late game when you eliminate someone. In most tournaments, all you get is plus one or plus two points per elimination, which is nothing compared to what you get from placement points. So unless you're dropping like 40 plus bomb games back to back like Taysen or his trio, then you're just better off going for consistency of W keys. So starting to focus on your main goals and not tunnel vision or get distracted is vital for being a pro player in this meta. All right, guys, so another tip for being more aware is to choose a good landing spot and to stick with it. You know, learn everything about your landing spot so that you can use it to win your early game fights more often. If you don't have a designated landing spot and you're just landing at random places, hoping to survive to mid game, you're doing it completely wrong. Learning a good looting route and spot that you can consistently land at is going to stop you from constantly getting eliminated early game. Trust me. So a good looting route is going to stop you and your trio from inefficiently looting your landing spot. And so not knowing where your teammates have looted, well, it's going to waste time 
as you're not finding the optimal amount of chests, you know, floor loot, materials, and much more. Also, learn what's going on around your landing spot and just think about where enemy teams are most likely gonna come from. Doing this is gonna make you more aware as you're gonna be able to predict the enemy's location before you even see each other. The longer you land somewhere, I'm telling you, the more efficient you're gonna be at looting and just getting materials from there. So allowing you to rotate earlier and leave your landing spot, which means that you can prepare for late game a lot sooner. Okay, on top of that, the more that you land at a certain spot, man, the more fights you can take and the better you're gonna get at using natural cover and what's around you to efficiently fight each of your opponents. So let me ask you this, how do you actually choose a good landing spot for games? Hmm. You should first probably try some places that you're already pretty comfortable with and if you're not the best early game fighter, you should definitely choose anywhere that's already very contested like Believer's Beach. After trying out a location, land there for like 10 games. And every time you leave the landing spot, check how many eliminations you got and check your loot, HP, and material count. So if you're landing there every game and not getting more than around 750 plus combined materials after you leave for circle, you most likely should choose another place to land at. And on top of that, okay, if you're not getting a good enough loadout to really fight players after the first circle, you should definitely choose somewhere else to land. Okay, so once you find a location that you're definitely comfortable with and you're just getting pretty good, the loot match is coming your way, everything is just turning out for you, you're gonna realize that your games are just much more consistent since you are just much more aware of your surroundings early game as well. So knowing the ins and outs of your area can make you a lot more aware and help you stay alive through to the mid game. You know, gather more eliminations and set you up for a good chance of winning the match. So do not make the mistake of not choosing a good landing spot for your competitive matches, all right, you got it? So another way to become more aware in your arena lobbies is to take the high ground more often and stop playing low ground, mid ground as much during those high player end games. So remember when we said it's harder to focus with all those footsteps stomping around you? Well, when you're on ultimate high ground, you can have every single enemy team player in your field of view at once, meaning you're not gonna have that problem anymore. Sure, it's still hard to pay attention to everybody, but it's even harder to stay aware when you're in between all of those players on mid ground, not knowing what's going on around you. This is why so many pro players in late games fight for high ground. So being on high ground guys and just having all players below you instead of all around you, it just makes it 10 times easier to survive until the top three. And since they're all below you, shooting them down with an AR can grant you easy elimination and really stop them from building up to you. So anyway, ultimate low ground is at least better than mid ground since it means all players are above you, making it easier to process enemy locations and so it just makes it better for you. This is actually one of the ways the name low ground warrior actually works. However, playing as a low ground warrior late game is just very risky because if the zone ever moves to a mountain that you're going to have, it's going to be an extremely hard time rotating upwards. Push across Sami, it's time for the recap. Here we go. A good headset is vital to play Fortnite competitively since if you can't hear your in-game sounds in good enough quality, there's no way that you could be aware of what's going on around you at all times. Alright guys, make sure that your game audio settings are set to the right options to really allow you to hear your enemy's movements. You know, there's really no point having a good headset if you don't have the right settings. Alright, so one of the hardest challenges to overcome when working on your awareness is tunnel visioning. Always focus on the main goal and just never get distracted by eliminations unless you need the kill for siphon health and materials, all right? All right, so here we go. Remember to pick a good landing spot and just stick to that. If you're choosing a new spot, at least play 10 games where you actually manage to get out of your landing spot and pay attention to your loot. If it's good loot, it's worth definitely learning that spot more for a longer time. Uh, and then just having a designated landing spot will guarantee you more awareness and will make you stay alive more consistently until mid game. And finally, start taking high ground more often towards the end game. You know, there's a reason why the best players are always on high ground. So you should take high ground as well. This is gonna make you much more aware since you are overlooking the entire lobby, allowing you to pick off teams with your AR and survive until the top three. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for today's videos, man. These tips, I'm telling you, are gonna make you so much more aware in Arena. If you guys liked the video, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Connect with me on my Instagram at your motivation guy. Bunch of Crush Army, I'm so proud of you. Listen, nothing can stop you if you can remain focused and going after your dream. Don't stop, don't quit. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.